Hey everybody, Taz from Critical Thinking Anarchist here, and uh, okay, uh, this is an interesting one here. So, my buddy posted this a few days ago, uh, from April 19th, and it's written on Games Radar, and it's How to Stop a Teenage Girl from Playing Warhammer. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna say right now trigger warning here. Um, I'll you'll you'll understand as I go through it. Um, so first she starts uh, a journey with war games and two visits to the Warhammer store. Being a woman who plays Warhammer can suck. This isn't news, of course. I don't know why. Okay, so let me uh, I'll I'll disclaim I I know very little about Warhammer. Um, it's been around for a long dang time. I never understood it as a kid or a teenager. Um, I knew it existed. Um, I was never under, I never quite understood what it was because I knew it was involved little figurines. I knew people painted them. Um, I knew people played games with them, but I didn't understand how it all worked. I was super um, not. Uh, I, I I didn't. I was. And I won't. I won't. I don't want to say sheltered. Um, I was very ignorant, still am, um, very ignorant as a kid as to uh, like tabletop RPG. I, it made no sense to me. Um, friends of mine played it, but I didn't. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what involved. So I never got into d and I never got into Warhammer. I was like a complete normie, which is weird considering um, my background. And we'll get into that another day. I probably should have gotten into all those things. My friends, and I didn't realize they were my friends at the time, my friends were very much into that thing. Uh, again, a whole other story. So she says, being a woman who plays Warhammer can suck. This isn't news, of course. At least as a woman playing video games, you can mostly cross enemy lines without a hitch, even if you play online multiplayer. After all, disguising your gender can be as simple as turning off your mic and resisting the deep-seated urge to play a healer. I'm joking, mostly. All right, we're going to we're starting off with the BS there. Um, most gamers don't care about gender. The only ones that do are weird teenage boys. OK, we're, we're just going to throw that one out there. I played with a lot of people. I, I, I actually played with more guys who I thought were women than actual women. Go play Go figure that one out. I, I played with more more young men or whatever they were. Who I, th you know, when I was playing with them, I thought they were, I thought they really were women. And it just turned out they were playing female characters. A lot of, I mean, one of my favorite characters that I played on um, World of Warcraft was, uh, was a female. Two of mine, actually. Two of my best characters were female. Um, and they were mains at different times when I was playing World of Warcraft. And sure, so I'm sure a lot of people thought I was female because, of course, I used a female name playing them. Anyway. Playing in person, often a prerequisite for war games and the best tabletop RPGs, can throw a real spanner in the works. What you share of yourself is no longer your gamer tag or your avatar. It's your face, your body, your voice, each an element carrying with it its own its very own cultural baggage. Again, since I've never done really any tabletop RPGs, I have no idea what she's talking about. But from everybody I've ever known unless you're playing in like a tournament or something like that, um, or you're going for like a weekly, you know, weekly daily type thing at a specific store, this wasn't an issue because usually what you do is you get your friends together um, or you recruit friends or you recruit people within your school or your, you know, your friendship circle or whatever it is. When you pick up tabletop games, you're often looking for a little more than just someone to play with. You're looking for a community. No, you're looking for a group, not a community, a group. You're looking for three to six or eight people who do what you do, not a community, a group. As the heated discourse around the place of women in Warhammer 40K's canon surges on, again, this is a very, very, very new thing. It's a stinging reminder that finding that community is not always so easy if you're not a dude. No, it's not easy, period. Even if you're a dude, these quote-unquote communities are like majorly gatekept because they want people they know are going to show up, who are going to be reliable, and who are not going to be assholes. 
that's just a fact. I mean, then that one I know from personal experience because even with my group of friends who are into tabletop RPGs, I never gotten, you know, I've gotten invited like a couple times because they didn't know why, if I was into it, they didn't know if I'd be interested. So, you know, I'm not reliable. I have no idea what I'm doing. They don't want to spend hours upon hours training me on this, starting me from brand new while they're already, however many hours, days, weeks, months, whatever into their campaigns. As a 15-year-old girl with a voracious desire to play tabletop RPGs and a friend group who couldn't be less interested in the idea, I struggled to organically tap into the tabletop hobby. Again, that's most people. That I'm going to tell you right now, that is most people. Unless you have a group of friends, it is going to be tough. That has nothing to do with your age, your sex, whatever. My first contact with war games happened on the suggestion of a teacher of mine. Right on! Help, have your teacher help out. Apparently, her son, a fellow D&D nerd, wandered into the Warhammer store after the Age of Sigmar launch, drew an M like a moth to a fantasy flame. Cue the friendly sales assistants, initiating him into the wonderful worlds of Warhammer. Yes, please, I'll have what he's having. I guarantee you it took him days, if not weeks, of going in and talking to them and learning about it and understanding what was going on guarantee you it was not just minutes of talking once i convinced my best friend to stray from our usual saturday routine of drinking bubble tea and buying tat at forbidden planet the plan was in motion i was going to the warhammer store unfortunately i didn't exactly receive the same warm re reception again you're being told something third hand what probably took much much longer to go into i if you had gone in with that kid and he helped introduce you to them, you would have had a much different experience, guaranteed, because then you have someone that they've already talked to, that they already know. Technically speaking, your money is worth the same no matter where you shop. Technically speaking, yes. Although, if you really pay attention, you'll start to notice that your presence is valued a little differently everywhere you go. Okay. Those women's clothing stores that stock cheap crop tops? Hell yeah, 15-year-old girls are the gold standard there. Yeah, because that's literally the audience they want. These were the places where the sales assistants shot us easy smiles and called us pet names. Which is weird for 15-year-old girls. At least this at this particular Warhammer store, things were very different. Again, yeah. It's a gate-kept thing. The employee there floated stiffly behind my friend and I, and I as we inspected the boxes of minis and tiny pots of paints. He never engaged us as he did with other customers. Once again, I can almost guarantee you most of those other customers that he engaged were regulars. Not two brand new 15-year-old girls who he wasn't sure why they were there. He just watched accusingly. Yeah. It took me a good while before I built up the courage to start asking questions about what was on the shelves. Are those aliens? Do you just paint them? Do you have to pick the, those exact colors? Oh, that's cool. What do you do after that? Again, so now you're a brand new person that he has to explain everything to. He indulged my first few questions with a cold yes, no, before breaking the pattern with a sharp sigh. If you don't know what you're looking for, then why are you here? Right! What he's saying is, why are you here? He, he literally wanted to know you. Why are you here? Oh God, my cheeks went hot. This wasn't a question. This was a poorly concealed request for both of, for us both to piss off. No. What he wanted to know is, why are you there? He wanted to know, are you here because you think you are getting into something? Because you want, you know, because you're trying to impress somebody? Or are you here because you're genuinely interested and you really want to go in depth with all this stuff? You're a, you're a newbie. You're a noob. You're a brand, brand, brand new person. You have just told him, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. And he wants to know, are you here because you're just wasting time? Or are you here because you really want to get into this incredibly in-depth hobby? It's hard to know why he turned on us like this. That I'm just telling you right now. Was he a violent sexist? No, he wanted to know why you were there. Was it some kind of Revenge of the Nerds style lashing out against women that had disparaged his hobby in the past? No, he wanted to know why you were there. Was he just having a bad day? No, he wanted to know why you were there. 
I'll admit, I can't know for sure. He wanted to know why you were there. He wanted to know why you came in to his store to find out about this stuff because you don't know anything about it. You hadn't done anything about it. You hadn't been researched into it. You haven't been introduced by anyone to it. You heard about this thing. You came wandering into the store with your other friend who probably also didn't give it about what was going on in there. And you started asking him the newbie questions. All I know is that it was a familiar antagonism. Familiar to what? It was an antagonism I had felt before from especially bristly GameStop employees. Okay. Especially bristly GameStop. That's what GameStop employees are. They hated their jobs. I can guarantee. I knew GameStop employees. They hated their jobs. They all did. They thought they were getting into a really cool place where they could buy and sell video games and have fun with people. And it turned out to be a crap company. From customers at my retail job who would look right past me and seek tech advice from my male co-workers. Again, I have no idea what you're talking about. And from rock fans who'd ask me to name songs from the band whose t-shirt I was wearing. That's because there's a lot of freaking posers out there. It was the feeling of being subjected to gatekeeping. Yes! Yes! That's what Warhammer is! It is a gate-kept community. And rightfully so. Because they had been watching all these other things get turned into pop culture and get upon. His words carried with them a belief that not only did I not know what I was talking about, because you didn't, but I was also not welcome to learn. No, not it at all. Not it at all. It's not that you weren't welcome to learn. It's that you better know what you're what you're doing before you get into this. This is not just a hobby that you want to just play with here and there. This is a this is going to take time. This is going to take money. Thankfully, uh, so of course I took this as my cue to leave. Fine. That then that's then it, the gatekeeping worked. You didn't really care about this. Thankfully, this isn't a universal experience, and I'm sure it's not part of Games Workshop staff training to scare, off, scare girls off playing war games. No, it has nothing to do with you or a girl. Nothing. 100% nothing to do with you being a girl. Still, interactions like this, however rare they be, they're not. They're not rare. Can be enough to make newbies feel unwelcome, and that's what they want. And even unsafe. No, not unsafe. There's nothing unsafe. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to attack you with those they're hoping to share the space with. Hell, it can even scare them off the hobby completely. Again, that's what they want. They don't want this becoming a normie thing. And it's, unfortunately, it's already happening. I passed that Warhammer store many times in the years following my first poorly, poorly received visit. I did not go back in. That, again, that's what they wanted. They didn't want you going back in. If you were not going to take it seriously, they didn't want you as a customer. It was one emigration, and almost a decade later, before I find myself in a Warhammer store again, it was one of many stores my boyfriend and I had planned to pop into on a leisurely trip in Bristol. Okay. But I had evolved. As an adult, I had learned a little more about how to get by in spaces I felt I didn't belong. You're 23. You're barely an adult. The plan was to hide behind my boyfriend, play the role of the bored but supportive girlfriend, and learn by osmosis through what the employees would tell him. It was just safer this way, I thought. No. That's not safer. That's you're being a coward. You if you're genuinely interested, then you should be the one going like, hey, what is this? You know, I, like like, hey, I really want to get into this. I don't quite understand it. You know, I, I'm excited about it. It seems cool, but I, I don't I don't know what it is. Can you help me out here? What I didn't anticipate happening was the sales assistant reaching out to me and asking about my experience with Warhammer. Ta da! I told him I was a total beginner and sheepishly downplayed my interest in getting started. I really didn't fancy getting shot down again. You shouldn't have. You should have done the opposite. If you, again, if you were genuinely interested, you do the opposite. However, not only did he enthusiastically answer questions I posed to him, he started delivering advice ap apropos of nothing, recommending books and starter kits, and opening the door for me to find out more about the hobby and the people who enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird, huh? Once I was talked into painting my first mini, the support only deepened. Yeah. Once people realize that you're not there as just like, oh, what is this? I don't understand it. Blah, 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 blah. 
No, if you genuinely want to be involved, that's the way you do it. He stood guiding me through rudimentary techniques for creating texture and feeding me cool chunks of lore surrounding the army my tiny plastic man was supposedly a part of. By the time I looked up from my beautifully battle-ready mini and checked the time, I realized I had been in there for three and a half hours. Of course, I wound up spending a frankly shameful amount of money before I left too. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that things turned out differently, yet I can't help it thinking of 15-year-old self in the... Oh, yeah, that's right, she was 15, so she's about 25. Uh... And the opportunity she was denied to join, she, you, weren't, you weren't denied. You left. You left on your own because you were afraid, because you were a coward. I think of my seven-year-old sister, and I wonder if she'd ever be interested in me taking her to the Warhammer store. I wonder what her experience would be like. I know that particularly for those who don't fit the archetype of a Warhammer player, that first impression is crucial for establishing a feeling of belonging. Again, if you think your sister is genuinely interested and you can go in and introduce her and bring in some of the knowledge that you were given, then yes, she'll have a much better experience. Progress is being made in representation for women. Who? POC and LGBT. It's not about representation. It's about living a fantasy world. It's about a fantasy life. You get to make them whatever you want. You're painting them. You get to make them whatever you want them to be. There is no representation. The representation is what you make your own army. Even despite the slightly scary, very political... No doubt this is a worthwhile development. Yeah. Even despite the slightly scary, very politically charged backlash. There isn't... <sighs> the backlash is coming from you people. Trying to force this crap to happen. Even in the absence of this, the most meaningful inclusion of happens at your local store and within the community itself. There Again, it's a... In hobby spaces like Warhammer, which have developed an unfortunate boys club reputation, it's just as important to see female players around the table as it is to see female minis on it. In order for that to happen, they have to feel accepted and welcomed. It's a gate-kept community for a reason. So make an effort to engage new players. Be kind and try to be receptive to their questions. As turns out, it's pretty easy to stop a teenage girl from playing Warhammer if you don't. It's pretty easy to stop anyone to playing if you don't actually want to be a part of it. If you wanted to be a part of it, you would have. I worked retail for a very long time. For most of that, that was at Spencer's. So while we didn't necessarily sell that, I mean, I knew all the games by James people. I knew the um, Airstop people. I knew, you know, wherever it was that sold these types of things. I, I knew them, uh, you know, GameStop, whatever it was. I knew those people. So I, you know, as a mall employee, we would often engage each other. You know, they would go into my store and I would talk to them. I would go into their stores and I talked to them. Me, because I didn't necessarily sell those things specifically. It was my job to engage people, to get them to buy entertainment. Cause that's what we sold at Spencer's entertainment. There's nothing in a Spencer's that you need. There's nothing in the in the Warhammer store, or Games by James, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Games by James that we had sell, sold Warhammer sets. Uh, Airstop, when I you know when I worked at one that had an Airstop, they had that as well. Um, and they would a lot of times they would have those types of you know they would have like a Warhammer day and things like that, or you know you could go in the back and you know paint your minis and whatever. Um, and I and again for me it was not something I understood. I didn't quite get it, but that was comic shops back then. And, and for, so my experience was back in the late nineties through the mid two thousands. Um, right about 2010 was when I, or 2009 officially is when I stopped working at Spencer's between other jobs. So that was the thing back then. You, it was, everything was gate kept wholly because that's just how it was. Like you didn't want people who didn't want to be in there. You didn't want people who, I guess, you know, I'll spend five bucks and I'll do this and I'll do that. No, you wanted people who genuinely wanted to spend time and wanted to spend money and wanted to get into the lore. Um, yeah, I mean, I had, again, one of my best friends, he was super hardcore into the, into the Warcraft books. And I'm like, ah, I like the games. I'm like, I don't care about the lore. I would, you know, when I was playing the games, I would skip past all lore when I was playing Warcraft one and two. I would skip past the lore. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to kill orcs and kill trolls and kill human, you know, depending on which one I was. I just wanted to, to win. I didn't care about the story at all. It wasn't until much later, until World of Warcraft, 
even the first year of World of Warcraft, I was like skipping, skipping the lore, skipping the stories. And then I kind of realized I was like, you know, I'm I'm uh, depriving myself of a lot of entertainment. So I started going back, playing the older games, reading through those, started reading the going, you know, started a new character, start reading the actual quests, understanding what the story is behind everything, started understanding the Lich King, started understanding all that stuff. And then I started buying all the books. You know, so it was, I mean, Blizzard had been around for like 15 years by that point, actually probably 20 years by that point, by the time I started getting into the stories. And I was like, oh, now I'm getting this. It wasn't until I was in my almost mid to late 20s that I started understanding D&D and why people played that. And I was like, man, I kind of wish I had gotten into that when I was younger. You know, when I was a teenager, I probably would have been doing a lot more. I probably would have been enjoying myself. Um, you know, at Warhammer, I still Warhammer is something I still don't quite understand. I'm I. I also can't sit there for hours painting things like I, I respected the heck out of the people who did that with like the war figures, you know, um, like the World War Two, World War One stuff. You know, they're uh, the die cast cars and the plastic cars and uh, ships and model, you know, all the models. I respected the people who did that because I'm like, that takes time and dedication and man, uh, you know, more power to you. But that's just not me. Same thing with the Warhammer thing. Like, it's not me. That's not for me. Um, I have nothing against anyone who does it, you know, good on you for doing it. But again, it's intentional. It has nothing to do with being a female, has nothing to be do to do with a male. They wanted to know, why are you here? What is it that you want to do? Are you, do you really want to get into this? Do you really want to spend the time and money and effort? Do you really want to hang out at the store for, you know, three to six hours a day? going through these scenarios, going through the, you know, painting figures, you know, arguing with people. Can you handle that? Obviously you couldn't as a 15 year old girl. Obviously she could not as a 15 year old girl. That has nothing to do with it. it has nothing to do with sex, it has nothing to do with age, it has nothing, you know, I can guarantee you there are plenty of, uh, you know, 18, you know, okay, 13, 13 to 25 year old adult male, you know, there are 13 to 25 year old males who, got the same treatment guarantee it you know oh what is this oh blah, blah blah and i can guarantee you that same clerk was like why are you here if you had said something that impressed him like you know oh hey you know you got the you know, I, i'm not even gonna try and fake warhammer knowledge you know you got these whatever figures you got these particular colors you know da 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 um, impressed him with a little knowledge and plus him with whatever he have been like, Oh, Hey, I, I, I totally misjudged you. All right. Uh, let me help you out. But you, that's not what happened. So no, this has nothing to do with sexism. This has nothing to do with representation. Again, you get to paint these things. You get to do whatever you want. You create your own representation. And that's the whole problem with fantasy. You got a bunch of these people who want to be, who want it shown for them. They want every, they don't want to use their own imagination. And that's the worst part about all this is people don't want to use their own imagination. They want to be told. They want to be lectured. And it's ridiculous. I want to see myself on the screen because I don't have the imagination myself to see it. I don't have the imagination myself to put it up there. I don't have the imagination myself to put it on the table. I, I don't have that ability. And that is, that is an actual tragedy. That is an actual tragedy that people don't have that imagination anymore. You know, uh, I, I thank God, my kid, my kid can imagine anything right now. You know, he's three and a half years old and he is sitting there. Um, he said the other day, you know, uh, said I, my, my wife said something. She was having a bad day and she's like, I'm being a total mm, right now. And I said, uh, a witch. And she goes, yeah, that'll work. And my three and a half year old, I kid you not. And he goes, I saw a witch outside. <laughs> we both died. It was great. Cheered her up right off the bat. And he's like, I saw a witch outside and there was a pumpkin and there was a, and it just went off. And, he, you know, it's the middle of April. Of course, none of that has been outside. He, but he loves Halloween, too. Um, but he he made this entire entire scenario up in his head three and a half years old imagine amazing imagination i never want to take that away from him. i hope he never loses it 
because that will serve him the best in life. Anyway, I am sorry this guy, this got so long. Um, but yes, this has nothing to do with representation. This has nothing to do with your age. This has nothing to do with your sex. This has nothing to do with your orientation. This is just how, how the world had always been. Do you want this? Why do you want it? Why do you want to get into it? This is what gatekept community is supposed to be about. Why do you want to be here? Do you want to be here because you want to join the, the fantasy realm? Or do you want to be here because you want to change the fantasy realm to fit you? And that's the real question. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, everybody let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I have no idea what this is gonna this week is going to bring. Um, so I will see you in the next one. And thank you all for watching. You guys take care. Bye.